Hello and welcome to Capacity TV. I'm joined today by John Garrett from Packnet. Welcome John. Can you talk to us why Packnet decided recently to focus more on its enterprise and carrier customers? Well, it starts with uh, the change uh, in, in, in our CEO. Uh, Carl Gridner joined us in July of this year. He evaluated our, our strategy and I think our core strategy remains the same, but uh, he saw a need for us to focus. Uh, and so uh, looking at our business, where are we able to deliver the most uh, value to customers? Uh, where are the margins for our services the best? Uh, it is in the enterprise and the carrier space. So some of the other services that we were delivering to um, the residential sector, uh, the wholesale voice sector, were yeah. businesses that we uh, have made a decision we're going to exit. This uh, has been a discussion for some time within yeah. the company, but it's just been recently that we've, uh, okay, Carl's come on board. We need to just focus more on our strategic customers, which will be the carrier and, and larger enterprise. It's quite a big move, I suppose, to turn off what, what is of your voice business or the, the, the traditional voice TDM. We never had a very large voice business. Okay. Uh, you look at uh, others in the market and they were really making uh, strides to, to, to grow that business, Tata for example. Uh, we just did not see uh, that as part of our core strategy. We kept it there because it can generate revenue and it did generate revenue. But uh, again, it was a distraction, we believe, from our, from our core structure and our core value points, which are, again, for the carrier and the enterprise market. With the, the focus on enterprising and carrier customers, can you talk to me about your strategy in the, the data center market? We've been uh, providing co-location services um, uh, ever since PACNET became PACNET all the way back to the Asian Netcom days. Uh, we have over 20 co-location facilities throughout uh, the region. But we saw a strategic need to, to grow our capabilities and have larger facilities. Uh, some of those facilities are leveraging uh, the cable landing stations that you know, are the backbone for our subsea system in Asia, uh, but we've also taken space uh, in the CBD area of Sydney, for example, uh, where we have over 900 racks uh, of capacity. Uh, we just brought online our Hong Kong center, which is over 1,200 racks uh, of capacity. We'll be making announcements on a larger facility in Singapore, hopefully shortly. Uh, we're also, uh, again, leveraging uh, our joint venture partner in, in China, uh, Packnet Business Solutions, or PBS. Uh, we're launching uh, uh, data centers in Chongqing, which we hope will come online first quarter of next year. And uh, in the next week or two, we'll be making an announcement publicly about another uh, data center uh, that we're hoping to have online in China by 2014, first quarter. So that's a, it's an aggressive strategy for us, but we like it because, again, it, it's, uh, for us, we see the marriage of our strong subsea network capabilities with our data center capabilities being able to deliver a core set of services that really no other competitor can provide. With the restructuring, um, obviously there has been um, some reduction uh, in, in workforce just because we are exiting some of the businesses, so we are having to restructure our teams. Um, we have made the decision to uh, break uh, our sales uh, organization into two groups, one wholly focused on the enterprise business uh, and one wholly focused on the carrier business, which I'm responsible for. You talked about the staff um, being reduced. Are you doing a lot of retraining? Are you taking a lot of the, the voice people and retraining them in more of the data services? Some, some of the people in the voice world we've, we've kept on because they had data uh, experience previously as well. Um, they obviously know how PacNet works internally, and that's always a plus um, as you go through restructuring. Uh, we are doing some restructuring with teams uh, around what we call our network trading, which is uh, uh, negotiating and working with our uh, third-party suppliers of capacity, as well as the people that are working to provision those services. Since the announcement of the new strategy, how are you being perceived by the industry? Well, again, that might depend upon who you're talking to. Um, we are um, sending notices out to residential customers in Singapore saying we're, we're no longer able to support them for their email and their internet access. Uh, and they may have been a user of Pacific Internet Service for many years. So um, that's obviously uh, a relationship that's, that's ending and, and, and people might be unhappy, but there's obviously many, many choices in the marketplace for them to go to, and we are uh, taking pains to make sure that when we advise them, we are giving them options and, and information about what other providers they can use to get that service. Uh, for the customers that we are strategically focused on in the care and the enterprise, uh, the feedback has been quite positive because essentially what we're telling them is, we're really focused on you. Uh, previously, we had um, a, a number of customers uh, across a very wide spectrum, and perhaps we weren't giving the focus that was necessary. But now we really are, are, are honing in on, on where we want to spend our time, where we want to invest, uh, and that is strategic enterprise customers and, and carrier customers. With the new strategy, um, especially over the next three years, how much investment do you think we'll see in your global network? 
uh, well, you'll see significant investment across both the network and uh, our data center uh, capabilities. Uh, and as we build out the data centers, also moving into a whole, whole suite of managed services uh, from uh, storage on demand, um, server capacity on demand, uh, and, a, and a wider variety of managed services that we'll be investing in. Uh, the, the data center infrastructure themselves, as I mentioned previously, uh, and then upgrades, major upgrades that will be going on on the EAC and C2C and Unity networks. Uh, that will kick off in next year. Uh, we're evaluating uh, a couple of different suppliers uh, and we'll be deploying 40 gig and 100 gig technology across that network um, probably second quarter of next year. You, you mentioned uh, 40 gig and 100 gig upgrades. A lot of companies are looking to go straight to 100 gig. What, what's your opinion on that? That's a good question and something that we're still evaluating. Um, obviously, 40, uh, 40 G technology is a little more mature than 100 gig technology. Uh, you do have to deal with uh, longer distance spans, so trans-Pacific distance is quite long, so perhaps it makes 100 gig a little more challenging. Uh, at the end of the day, we have uh, multiple fiber pairs on these routes. Uh, it, it really is about finding the best vendor that's going to be able to work with us longer term uh, as we deploy these services. The end customers, generally speaking, are still using 10G delivery. Uh, so it's really about just getting the most cost effective, uh, the most resilient uh, service uh, platforms possible uh, on our subsea and our backhaul. John, and finally, um, one thing that makes carriers stand out from each other is their customer service. Now, I know PacNet has been recognized for customer service. Um, how, how do you see that growing? Uh, another good question, a question that we've discussed internally with the senior management team. How can we increase the level of, uh, of a customer experience? How, how can we make it easier for our customers to, to utilize our services? Uh, we, we do uh, pride ourselves on providing a, a high level of service to customers, but we wanted to see more automation. Uh, we're looking to deploy uh, uh, a more robust customer portal uh, that allows customers to uh, open up their own trouble tickets, um, look at provisioning lead times, get status of provisioning, uh, ultimately even provision their own services over a portal. Uh, and that's something that uh, we're quite excited about, uh, and that gets back to the investment question you'd ask. We're looking to have some heavier investment in IT, specifically uh, on, on systems and tools to, to enhance the customer experience. John, thank you very much for your time and joining us here today on Capacity TV. Thank you very much.